Welcome to our continuing educational webinar series. I'm Katherine Short, Partnership Marketing Manager for First Healthcare Compliance. At First Healthcare Compliance, we help you with a comprehensive compliance management solution tailored to your business, a hospital, hospital network, healthcare practice of any size, billing company, or skilled nursing facility, and we help manage every aspect of a compliance program and our training library provides hundreds of modules that are easy to assign and track. As part of our complimentary educational webinar series, we bring you experts from around the country to discuss relevant topics in the healthcare industry. We are so pleased to have John Shigarian, co-founder and chairman CEO of ERI with us today. John Shigarian creates profitable impact companies that make the world a better place. A serial entrepreneur responsible for co-founding Homeboy Industries, FinancialAid.com, Engage, and many other impactful organizations, Shigarian currently serves as co-founder, chairman, and CEO of ERI, the largest cybersecurity co-focused hardware destruction and electronic waste recycling company in the United States. Shigarian is also a sought-after speaker, panelist, and electronic recycling, cybersecurity, and ITAD industry authority. Annually, he speaks across the world in Asia, Europe, and the Middle East and the Americas. He has also authored and been featured in articles on the industry for recycling today, resource recycling, waste 360, and various business journals, and regularly provides his expert knowledge to news media, including CNBC, BBC News, Time, Fortune, Forbes, Washington Post, Security Ledger, Green Biz, LifeWire, City and State New York, Los Angeles Business Journal, and Verde X Change News, and many others. He is the co-author of The Insecurity of Everything and 101 Tips from the Marketing Masters, Ways to Supercharge Your Marketing and Exponentially Grow Your Business, and both bestsellers on Amazon, and both are bestsellers in Amazon in their respective categories. Shigarian earned a certi certification in cybersecurity, managing risk in, in the information age from Harvard, and has completed the MIT Sloan Cybersecurity Program. Shigarian also hosts Impact with John Shigarian, a weekly podcast featuring conversations with some of the greatest business minds and thought leaders on the planet. The podcast is available for listening on impactpodcast.com, iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and as a part of iHeartRadio's digital broadcast, reaching over 120 million users. Recent guests have included leaders from Verizon, Best Buy, GM, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, J Johnson & Johnson, JetBlue, Goodyear, Virgin, Dell, Timberland, and Nestle, New York City, Beyond Meat, Lipton, and many, many others, and a number of fascinating thought leaders and game changers. No stranger to recycling lies and serving up second chances, in 1993, Shigarian co-founded Homeboy Tortillas and Homeboy Industries, which continues to serve as a paradigm for urban renewal in America. Shigarian is also the creator of the popular Bulldog Root Beer brand, that he launched in 1997. He then co-founded financialaid.com, filing the financial, filling the financial aid gap for higher education and generating one of the most successful student loan companies in the country. He founded addicted.com in 2005 as one of the largest web resources for individuals seeking help for addictions online. The web base the website boasts a database of over 20,000 addiction centers across the United States. He's also the co-founder of Recycle Nation, a dynamic recycling and green living resource that simplifies the recycling process on a national level with a comprehensive interactive recycling location database. He's also the co-founder and CMO of The Marketing Masters, a digital marketing and web development company that builds effective ROI-driven marketing campaigns for business large businesses large and small. He co-founded Psalm Sleep, 
a drink formulated to help individuals achieve better and more restorative sleep. He's also co-founder and chief strategy officer of Engage, a web-based platform designed to digitize the process of booking talent online for unique personalized appearances. Goldman Sachs recently named Shigarian as one of the 100 most intriguing entrepreneurs of 2021 at its annual Builders and Innovators Summit. He was also recently named as one of the planet's top 100 recycling stars by Recycling International Magazine. He was named the Clean Tech Entrepreneur of the Year for Northern California by Ernst & Young and was officially named to City and State New York's prestigious Responsible 100 list last year. Before we begin, I would like to mention at First Healthcare Compliance, we strive to serve as a trusted resource for compliance professionals. And every month we celebrate their hard work and dedication with our Compliance Super Ninja recognition. Today, our team is turning the spotlight on Super Ninja Jean Basford, Human Resources Generalist at Maine Nephrology Associates. Jean says, I love working for a medical practice with such a caring staff, both clinical and non-clinical. We all work hard to make things run as smoothly as possible so our providers can give the best possible care to our patients. Congratulations, Jean. Our team is honored to have the privilege of working with you. A copy of our slides is available for download on the control panel. Feel free to submit questions into the question box on your control panel during the presentation. We will address questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Your PACOM and PMI CEU certificates will be emailed to you following the broadcast. Your PACOM certificate will come directly from PACOM and your PMI certificate will come from our email. There is no need to request either one. Additional CEU opportunities will be available to VC Advantage members following the live broadcast. See their website for details. So John, a very, very warm welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Catherine, it's totally my honor and uh, it's great to be back here in the beginning of 2022 with you and to be doing another great webinar for First Healthcare Compliance. I'm just really totally honored. We're thrilled, thank you so much. This, uh, the title of today's webinar is The Insecurity of Everything, Hardware Hacking Trends. Now, Catherine, um, when I came up with the name of this webinar with you, it's based on a book that I wrote with my partners and co-founders of ERI. And we launched the book in early 2021. And the book has become an Amazon bestseller and an industry trade book because the world has become more dangerous even since I did my last webinar with you. I'll give you an example. In 2015, cyber criminals successfully stole approximately $3 trillion from their victims around the world. In 2020, the number had risen to $6 trillion that cyber criminals successfully stole from their victims around their world, around the world. So when we grow up and listen to our parents who constantly repeat the old adage that crime doesn't pay, Unfortunately, what we're seeing right before our eyes is that in the cyber criminal world, crime does pay. And the crimes in the cyber world are both software related, human related, and hardware related, simplistically put. Today's discussion is going to center around hardware destruction hardware data destruction done responsibly and helping all your great listeners who have tuned in here in 2022, trying to learn best practices that people make the decisions 
that could lead to good results when it comes to appropriate hardware data destruction. And people can also make bad decisions. So the goal is to show everyone who's attending today's webinar how to make the best decisions when it comes to the appropriate and responsible way to destroy your own hardware. And that goes for your personal hardware that you use and also the hardware that is existing in the organization that you work for or with. Time Magazine came to Fresno, California in 2019 and did a story on us called The World Has an E-Waste Problem. Now, first of all, since my headquarters are in Fresno, California, it's literally and actually a big deal when time comes to Fresno, California. If it was Los Angeles or New York or Chicago or Miami or Philadelphia or any great city across the nation, major hub, maybe not so much of a big deal. But when they come to Fresno, they believe they're on to a big story. And e-waste and the problem of e-waste is a big, big story. When I got in this business in 2004, now 17 plus years ago, e-waste was the fastest growing solid waste stream in the world. It was the backside and the dark side of the technological revolution. You see, when electronics are thrown into our landfills or rivers or lakes or shipped across our, off our shores to China, India, or Africa, only bad things happen because electronics contain arsenic, mercury, lead, beryllium, cadmium, and many other hazardous and bad materials in them. So when they leach into the environment, if they're put in a landfill and rained upon and the lining in the landfill is broken, which is quite often the case, these materials, hazardous materials, getting into our water and ground supply, eventually making it back to our vegetation and animals and people is really, really bad for the environment. Really, really bad for people, really, really bad for the future of this planet. It makes our world a much less sustainable place. Therefore, we created our company to be the solution, to responsibly recycle e-waste, Keep it above ground. Don't let it be shipped to China, India, or Africa. Don't let it go to landfills anymore. So when you keep electronics above ground, what we've learned in these 17 and a half years, it's actually a great ESG and circular economy story. Let me explain why. When you responsibly recycle electronic waste, in last month, December 2021, we recycled approximately 20 million pounds of electronic waste. And when done right, all of the materials that come out of electronic waste, the glass, the steel, the aluminum, the copper, gold, silver, lead, palladium, all goes for beneficial reuse. The data is destroyed, no breaches could happen, and the planet is a better place for it. There's a huge energy savings, and you no longer liquidate the precious planet Earth that we have only one of. But the story is not only about the environment. When we got in the business, it was all about environmental protection. Keep e-waste out of landfills and from being shipped off our shores. But we started hearing the drumbeat from both Silicon Valley and entrepreneurs across the country that started getting involved in the new space called cybersecurity. They saw a void in the marketplace. Bad guys were attacking people who were using all this new technology that makes our personal and professional lives more interesting, more connected, and overall more enjoyable. 
But unfortunately, to every good thing on this planet, there's a dark side to it. And the dark side, when it comes to our electronics, is that it can create data breaches that are potentially catastrophic. And we started messaging that in 2012 as a company, as ERI goes. We said, responsibly destroying of your old electronics is both an environmental imperative, but also a cybersecurity one as well. And everybody thought we were Martians. Nobody really wanted to listen to what we were saying then. Until 2017, where I was at a big cybersecurity conference in New York City, where I was actually speaking at and sharing this journey and sharing what we were seeing with regards to inappropriate disposal of old electronic devices and breaches, data breaches that were happening because of it, that a, the lead writer for Fortune magazine approached me and asked for my business card. His name is Robert Hackett. He's the lead writer on cybersecurity issues. He said he'd get back to me and a week later, he called me back and he said his editors could not believe that they had only covered the software side of the cybersecurity story in their great magazine, Fortune Magazine, but never covered the hardware dangers that lurk within all of our old hardware and electronics. And so they wrote a story on us called Dead But Not Forgotten. And this is the net net of the story. This is the last sentence of the story. And if this is all you remember from today's webinar, then today's webinar was very, very successful. It turns out e-waste isn't just an environmental menace, but a cybersecurity one, too. That means all the e-waste that we create on this planet, if disposed of inappropriately, yes, we're harming the environment and the future sustainability of all of our children and grandchildren coming after us. But in present terms, it creates a cybersecurity risk that could be catast catastrophic not only for the company or organization or healthcare group that you work for, but also on a personal level, it could be catastrophic for your family and finances. This is what I see on a daily basis. And this is what I'm trying to share with all of you today. See, these were the data security laws that exist on the left-hand side. These were existing and legacy laws. Many of you are already familiar with most of these. HIPAA and high tech, for sure. FACTA and FICRA, FISMA, PCI, COPA. And then in May of 2018 came GDPR. GDPR was a European invention. It had to do with companies that handle personal information of individuals, of all of us. And America being what we are, land of the home and the free and the brave, we typically look to Europe for their best ideas. And then we look to them and say, we could do that, but only better. That's just the American way. It doesn't mean it's true always, but it's just how we are. And so when it came to GDPR in May of 2018, which got enacted in the EU, Washington, D.C., and our public servants in the Congress said, we're going to do something bigger and better to protect the great people of the United States of America. Now, they started putting in their own versions, couldn't really come up with a solution that worked or that they agreed upon. I know. That's not a shock to anybody on today's webinar. So the state said, hey, we're not going to wait for you, Washington. You're in disarray or at least disorganized on this very important and critical issue to us. We're going to do our own versions of GDPR. So 
state by state, Nevada, California, New York, Maine, Colorado, and Virginia pass their own versions of GDPR, of data privacy and data control laws that protect the constituents and citizens of each of those states. Now you can look on this map here. The drumbeat is growing. The regulation around data privacy and data protection is in all the green states on this map. The yellow states are the states that have legislation pending that are going to follow the green states. The gray states are going to catch up to all of them. The best cybersecurity people, the smartest cybersecurity on the planet have told me that by the end of 2023, a mere 24 months from now, every state in the United States will have some form of GDPR, data control, data privacy, data regulation that further puts a noose around the neck of all the organizations that touch or manage data on behalf of their clients, patients, or constituents in every industry. Since today we're talking about healthcare, healthcare is especially at high risk. We'll start discussing why. Why has electronics gone from being the fastest growing solid waste stream on the planet when I got into this industry in 2004 to now the fastest growing solid waste stream on the planet by an order of magnitude of five times com compared to the second fastest growing solid waste stream because of the ubiquitousness of all of our electronics. Look at the innovation nation that we live in and what's happened. The Ring doorbell, the Amazon Echo, the Nest thermostat. Our appliances now have television screens in them and have hard drives wearables, and all sorts of other great gadgets that, again, make us more connected, make us in many ways safer, make our lives easier and potentially even much more enjoyable. But the danger lurks when these devices are not responsibly destroyed or the data contained there in these devices is not responsibly destroyed when they come to their end of life. Of course, all of you can get these slides, so I won't sit here and read everything on this slide in front of you, but it's important to know when it comes to the internet of things, what your devices really know about you. The short answer is everything. All your text messages and contacts, your passwords, your deleted files, your bank information, where you've been, locations where you've been, locally, nationally, internationally, everywhere you go, it's all being tracked, including our credit card numbers. This is real and also scary because if some wrong person gets your cell phone or gets the laptop or copy machine from your healthcare agency or healthcare organization, catastrophic results can happen and they happen on a daily basis. 4G to 5G is creating a massive turnover for all of our gadgets. It's bigger than analog to digital. It's even bigger than black and white to color television. And let me tell you the real facts. Most of the carriers are my clients. And they've made it very clear to us that right behind the 4G to 5G switchover, 6G is coming close behind. So the turnover of our electronics is at a breakneck speed that we've never seen before. According to the United Nations, only 17% of all the electronics that we use on the planet are being responsibly recycled when they come to their end of life. In the United States, that number's closer to 12.5%. Unfortunately, we're not doing a great job. Unfortunately, we're leaving ourselves vulnerable and very unprotected.
Here's a story, a recent story, real life. A mere four months ago, in September of 2021, improper hard drive disposal led to a health, health data breach of 100,000 patients at health reach community health centers in Maine. Let me break that down for you. The liability for that health center is going to be massive. There's going to be class action suits that are derivative of this breach. The penalties both on a statewide and federal level will be coming down. But the liability from the patients who were breached with their personal information will also be litigated in the months and years ahead. This is going on on a regular basis. It's not always reported because the organizations that have breaches fail to self-report or simply don't know that it happened until some catastrophic event happens to a patient and the lawsuits begin and the liability tab runs unbelievably high. We're dealing with this on a weekly basis with healthcare organizations across this great country, financial organizations, and every business industry as a whole is now at risk more than ever before. Here's a vendor data breach that affected patient information at Metro Health, another healthcare system. And I'm gonna run through these slides because everyone is gonna have access to these slides and can read them for themselves. But these are just examples of some of the recent breaches and some of the re recent penalties that have been meted out to organizations who haven't taken care of either their software or hardware systems to stay up on the times and the threat of cyber criminals trying to breach their organization. Data breach affects 300,000 mental health clinic patients in Colorado. The Aspen Point Health Clinic, disastrous. This is a whole article in the New York Times how ransomware puts hospitals at risk. Hacked hospital chain says all 250 US facilities affected. This was a liquidation. These examples are not only legally nightmares in terms of monetary damages, both from litigation from patients and also fines on a statewide and federal basis, but it's a liquidation, a wholesale liquidation of the goodwill of these great brands that have for years met the healthcare needs of the communities that they serve across this country. Anthem, 41 states have slapped health insurer Anthem with a 39 or $40 million fine or settlement. For cyber attacks that happened eight years ago, but affected almost 80 million individuals. Oh, it's never over once you've had a data breach. The liability runs immediately and also has a long tail to it as we see with this story. Patient dies after ransomware attack hits a hospital. These are real stories, real people, real tragic results. Beaumont data breach exposes private health info and social security numbers. Well, that's a disaster. Approximately 112,000 people were impacted. Gosh, I don't wanna have to answer those, those calls. I don't wanna have to be the administrators of those healthcare agencies when that happens. And here you have 
the Internet of Things. Wired Magazine wrote an article on how the Internet of Things have created more devices that are exposed to data breaches than ever before. This issue is real. It's not going away. And as I said at the top of this conversation, the cyber criminals are winning. Cars have become even computers on wheels. When we started this company, I never dreamt that Tesla or Ford or Volvo or CarMax would become clients of ours. Please be aware that when you return your modern day car to a rental agency, somebody has to wipe the hard drive of that car. Many of you, including myself, have gotten into a rental car and seen all the data from previous driver, from a previous driver or drivers that's automatically downloaded if we press the wrong button on our phone or tablet when we're in a rental car. It could be catastrophic for our family, for our banking information, or other private information for our family to get in the wrong person or person's hands. Beyond cars, also a new trend post-COVID should be thought about. Many of you are working from home or working in some sort of hybrid situation where you work at the healthcare agency that employs you or healthcare organization that employs you and partially also working from home now. What we've learned is this, the COVID tragic crisis period that we're just starting to make our way through now in 2022 and beyond happened very fast in March, 2019, March, 2020, excuse me. And people started working for home, from home without all the guardrails that are set up by your CISOs and CTOs in your hospitals and healthcare settings. So that meant you started working from home with either your personal technology or your healthcare technology firm or healthcare firm sent you some technology to use in your home. The net net was this, what we saw and what we're seeing with our clients. And we have hundreds of healthcare agencies and healthcare organizations that are our clients. So I'm speaking from personal knowledge. And this covers not only healthcare, but other industries as well. Workers at home, and this even includes myself, unfortunately started using their personal hardware, tablets, cell phones, laptops, desktops for business purposes and their business hardware for per personal purposes. It just happens when we have time crunches, when something breaks down and we have to go to a backup plan. And what does that really mean net net to everybody in this webinar today? That means there's a cross contamination, fancy terminology, when data from one platform gets onto another, it's called contamination. There's a cross contamination of your personal data onto your hard onto your professional hardware and vice versa. Your professional hardware, a lot of that information because of cross use transfers over to your personal hardware. And what does this mean? It means if you work for a healthcare organization or agency, and you believe there's a chance that you've had cross contamination, which I'd be shocked if there wasn't. Please adhere to the protocols that your chief technology officer or CISO or whoever's leading 
the data security and cybersecurity efforts at your organization have asked you to adhere to for your personal, for your professional hardware, use it on your personal hardware as well. Make sure it's responsibly destroyed when it comes to end of life. Not put on eBay or Craigslist, and we've seen those examples at our company that healthcare organizations have found employees selling their old hardware in open marketplaces that they thought they wiped the data that still contained the data. Not only that's personal to them, but the data of their patients or clients or constituents that they serve. This is a real thing. This isn't a fantasy story that I'm making up. eBay, Craigslist, and other open marketplaces. Employees have been selling their old hardware. Don't do it. For your own personal safety and protection, don't do it to protect the healthcare organization you work for. Find a responsible recycler. Find a responsible form or way to destroy of the data and the hardware, not only obviously to protect the environment, but to protect yourself and protect the great organization you work for. As an added bonus, all the webinar participants today, Catherine and her great organization, First Healthcare and ERI are offering a free copy of our book sent to your own home or office as just an education and further education tool. And the book is called The Insecurity of Everything. And it has all the information I covered today, plus more. We wrote the book, not as a profit-making venture, but just as an education tool. So we'd be honored to share it with all the webinar participants today. Thank you again for your time. I wish you all a prosperous and healthy 2022 and beyond. And it's just an honor to be here and be invited by Catherine and her great organization to share what I know with all of you today. John, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Um, it really is true that uh, we all really think about the impacts, I think, of. Um, you know, hacking and um, software issues, but um, it really does come secondary to many of us to think about, holy mackerel, what about the hardware and everything that um, is hidden within the deep recesses of, you know, um, of all of our devices and um, the devices we don't even think about, you know, like our printers or, you um, um, uh, all of those other uh, devices. So um, thank you so much for the work that that you all do and for um, getting the word out. And um, I really appreciate that. So thank you. It's my honor, Catherine. Yes. Um, so we, we I do have a few questions here. If, um, if you have a few minutes here. Absolutely. Okay. So the first one is, What's more important when it comes to e-waste, environmental protection or data protection? Well, that's well, a good question. Yeah. yeah, and that's like it's like a Sophie's choice if anyone is right. old enough as I am as on this call of uh, the, the the great movie that that existed uh, that was produced for 30 years or so. But it's truly it's a, that's it's a 50-50. But for today's purposes, the liability that runs with a data breach, and that I shared, legal liability, financial liability, goodwill being liquidated, and brands being destroyed or horribly tarnished. Um, for this discussion, we're gonna talk about the data breach side. Of course, as all good citizens, all of us can agree that we all want to drink and we want our children to drink and our grandchildren to drink cleaner water and breathe cleaner air and leave the world a better place than we found it. So the fact that good environmental protection can happen when we're acting in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in protecting our data 
both personal data and the healthcare agencies we work for is a one-two punch that's hard to deny and hard to turn away from. So even though it's 50-50, uh, for today's discussion, really people have to pay attention to how we responsibly recycle all the electronics to protect the data that's contained there in those devices. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, that is a difficult choice, but um, thank <laughs> you for the explanation. Okay, um, the next one. Do you think that all the new trends and regulations that have come about due to COVID-19 are temporary, or do you think they're here to stay? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the work from home thing is here to stay. People are gonna be doing some version of a hybrid working from home a couple of days a week in an office. That means a doubling up of their electronics. They're gonna have a home setup where they have a desktop or a laptop that they can do Zoom calls and, and all these other modern type of connect, uh, you know, connectivity uh, events so they could see all their uh, relationships, both personal and professional in the United States and around the world. Um, but that also means the issue of cross-contamination is real and is going to continue. That trend will continue as well. So we just have to take care and make sure that we're aware. And I'm, and I'm as guilty as everybody else. It's just, just real life. Sometimes our, 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 our hardware from our, the organization we work for or with isn't available, so we use our personal hardware. That means the data of that, the organization we work for, gets on our personal devices and vice versa. These trends are, are only gonna grow in, the, in 2022 and beyond, and we just have to be really uh, careful to take care of the data on our personal devices and our professional devices because we have more devices than ever before, and it contains more information as you saw on that slide that I presented earlier, than we ever could imagine. Okay, <clears throat> all right, and then, okay, this is a this is a good one too here um, because things things have changed. So, prior to the onset of COVID nineteen, what was the single biggest factor driving the need for efficient data destruction? Prior to COVID-19, you had the existing laws that we talked about and those that affect healthcare, such as HIPAA and Starbucks and Graham Leach. And, um, and then HIPAA in combination now with GDPR and was I showed the trend of not only GDPR on a federal level in, in, in the United States and around the world, but GDPR now coming to every state. That, that tightening of the regulations of data control and data privacy on a statewide level is critical for everyone to realize and to be very respectful of because the regulators are not playing around anymore. They're finding, they're finding brands every day in every state, both federally or on a statewide basis. So people have to be really, really careful about this stuff now more than ever before. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Um, I wanted to encourage our um, attendees of this webinar to also be on the lookout for a, um, a, a radio show and then um, podcast that we're going to have coming out. Um, after the radio show comes out, it'll turn into an archive podcast. So if, um, if our listeners um, or our attendees here um, are on the, the lookout. Um, uh, they can listen for a number of question and answers that we're going to do. So um, they can be on the lookout for that. So um, and and they can see that on our website. So I wanted to thank you so much, John. Did you have any other words of advice that you'd like to leave with us today? My contact information is uh, in your in the in the webinar materials that you're going to be sharing with all your great listeners. Anyone who would want an assessment of where they stand with regards to their hardware, I'm happy to give anyone a free assessment and overview of how of best practices. The book shares a lot, but if you want to contact me directly, I'm happy also to help people because it's a myriad of choices out there and a lot of what's online just isn't true. So I'm happy to help anyone who wants to navigate this and do it the right way to, to help navigate it. Perfect. Perfect. And I wanted to thank you again so much um, for sharing your book with our 
with our listeners, our attendees today as well. So thank you so much. That's very generous. And um, I think that's going to be a real help to, to our attendees as well. So um, that's very much appreciated. So thank you so much. Of course. Okay. So, um, so attendees, um, uh, I think we're, we did something different this time. Um, we had you share your um, address with us um, so that you could um, make sure that we uh, that we're able to um, send that to you. Um, so, um, but if if you for some reason didn't, um, um, we're going to make sure that you're able to um, to get that. So we'll get in contact with you, or you you can get in contact with us. So. Um, please use the contact information on the screen for any questions. Um, you can get directly in, in contact with John. Um, or if you think of something else, um, please send your questions along to me and we'll, uh, I'll forward them on. Um, please remember your PACOM and your PMI CEU certificate will be emailed to you from within two days following the broadcast. There's no need to request it. You can register for future webinars or request a demo of our compliance solution on our website at firsthcc.com or call us at 888-543-4778. And thank you for joining us. Please join us next time for our upcoming webinar on February 16th, Employment and Labor Law Roundup with 2022 Forecast and other hot topics given by Catherine Walters, partner at Bible Rutledge LLP. So be sure to register for that. The link will come in the follow-up emails um, after this webinar. And also you will be seeing um, upcoming soon links for uh, our upcoming our upcoming Virtual Healthcare Compliance Symposium 2022. So this will um, have uh, at least, I believe, six presenters. So that will count for at least six CEUs and six CLEs. And that will be a day of learning. And um, that will be on April 28th. So be sure to mark that in your calendars. There will be early bird signups for that uh, for at least about a month or so. And so be sure to uh, be on the lookout for that. And thank you again to John Shigarian. And John Shigarian was our presenter today. John Shigarian, again, is the co-founder and chairman slash CEO of ERI. And he's a serial entrepreneur who was responsible for the co-founding co of Homeboy Industries, financialaid.com, Engage, and many other impactful organizations. And he currently serves as co-founder and chairman and CEO of ERI, which is the largest cybersecurity focused hardware destruction and electronic waste recycling company in the United States, and they're also international. So um, thank you so much to John for presenting uh, for us today. Don't forget that you can contact John directly using uh, the uh, slides which you can download right now while you're watching and you can contact him for um, for questions that you might have but also for a copy of his book that he mentioned today in the um, in the in the presentation so you can you can do that which would be a really great thing um, so go ahead and do that and be on the lookout in the future for a podcast a radio show that we're doing together. And thank you so much again for joining us.